Well, many Americans like to head into the new year with resolutions, and dry January is a popular one. But if cutting alcohol out completely isn't a realistic option for you, damp January means cutting back on the amount of cocktails you consume. Studies say even a modest reduction can improve your heart, liver, sleep, skin, and energy. Let's welcome now News Nation medical contributor, Dr. Dave Montgomery, board certified cardiologist. Doctor, great to have you. Um, Marky mentioned this. She's never heard of damp January. I haven't either until this morning. Uh, but you can certainly understand coming off holiday parties and the like, why so many choose to cut down on drinking this month. What are some healthy and realistic expectations to set based on your own unique situation? Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I was reading that article. It said, uh, damn January or dry-ish. I think that is really quite, you know, quite clever. Um, listen, any reduction in alcohol for us has far-reaching benefits for our health, right? I mean, you know, that nightcap that we are, you know, potentially used to, uh, you know, before bed might be counterproductive. We know things that I deal with every day, like blood pressure, blood sugar, blood cholesterol, are all sort of improved with less alcohol. We also know the big one, you know, 50-year-old guys like me are thinking about our midsection, and your weight can go down when you reduce the amount of alcohol. Well, why? Well, because alcohol, the, the, the molecule itself, has uh, uh, more calories than carbohydrate or protein. And so we know that reducing it across the board is gonna be good for everybody. Now, it does depend on how much you normally would drink, but we think across the board, a reduction is gonna be beneficial. So how drastic does that reduction have to be, doctor, in order to see uh, some of those major benefits that you outlined? And I know this will vary patient to patient. Yeah, no, it will. It will, in fact. But but even a little bit will uh, will benefit uh, will benefit us all. So I like the idea of a round number that's accessible. So if I say, you know, Kelly, reduce your alcohol intake by fifty percent. Oh, that's intuitive. I can really do that. If I normally have two drinks, I'm going to have one. If I normally drink four nights a week, I'll drink two nights a week. If I normally have four ounces, I'll drink two. So it's really a a, a neat way. Of, of doing it, and I think it also sort of will let you see some of the benefits. If too small of a reduction may not give you some of the benefits that uh, that we just mentioned. Well, I think that's excellent to put that those checkpoints out there so you can at least track your success. And if you're having success this month and you'd like to continue cutting down on your intake, are there best practices, doctor, for continuing uh, this trend and doing it sustainably? I think that's the key here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think once you sort of start this and you've got smaller steps that one can take, uh, I always say that su success is the best motivator. And so when people see that it is positive, they see that scale going down, they see the belt loop going, uh, you know, going down. Um, that is one of the things that I think will, will help us keep going. I always tell my patients a couple of key pointers, though. Before you go to have, you know, the happy hour with, uh, with a group of friends, go ahead and hydrate yourself, like really overhydrate yourself so that when you are drinking, for example, you're not drinking because your brain is like, hey, there is water here, we're dehydrated, let me drink more there, however little water there is in your alcoholic beverage. And then the other thing that I've started doing, Kelly, is starting to look at the NAs, the non-alcoholic beverages. Remember that a part of uh, you know, our drinking is just the social aspect of it. It is just sort of a habit that we have. And I've tried a couple of the non-alcoholic beers and you just, can't tell the difference between your experience, although the flavor is a little different, the experience and uh, and the alcohol. And I think that's one of the ways to try it. Yeah, mocktails are great. I, I can attest. Um, so if you do have a loved one who's struggling, and we have about 30 seconds left, but I think this is an important topic. How do you rally behind them, provide them support, maybe encourage them to this path without making the situation potentially much worse? Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, you know, if you know that somebody's got a dependency issue, an alcohol use disorder, or you're even just concerned about it, even without a diagnosis, I think you being the change you want to see is a great way to do it. So you say, hey, let's do mocktails today. Let's do non-alcoholic versions today. Let's do something else. Um, and then, you know, talking to your doctor. There are some people, for example, who shouldn't just drastically stop their alcohol and those are people who over consume because withdrawal which is a very uh, dangerous physiologic response can be quite dangerous.
Well, excellent tips as always. So much fun to talk to you about these topics and much more. Dr. Dave Montgomery, thank you. Great to be with you, Kelly. Yeah, you and I are both having dry January, but our midsections aren't going down. We're both no. expecting our midsections aren't no. going down. Our sleep isn't improving. So none of the benefits Nothing's and happening. None of the fun. Yeah, yeah, but you know, some fizzy and a lot of different fruit concoctions. I, they're refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm on the mocktail train. I do enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.